Every day, Scotland's fishermen head out to sea, hunting the fish that go on your dinner plate. Quite a few fish suppers there, I would say. Look at that. Spend all week looking for that. Whoa, much already. Risking their lives in Britain's most dangerous occupation. Oh, no, 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 no. We've now got a Southeast Gale up on us. For these fishermen, every haul is a gamble. No, no, really bad haul. That's a beauty. Woo! Few little dance. Coming home to land their catch at one of Europe's biggest fishing ports, Peterhead. Here, the competition is fierce. 120, 125, 130, 135. No, good deal. So will they strike it big or return empty-handed? White fish trawler Reliance is in Scrabster, preparing to sail north towards Shetland. On board is owner John Clark and his son David. You are now in charge, Dave? Says Captain. Captain David? <laughs> so, if there's a mistake or anything goes wrong, it's him that gets it in trouble for it. <laughs> on this trip, David's taking on the role of skipper for the very first time he has to convince John that he's a worthy captain. It's like a driving test. He's like the instructor still watching you in everything you do. So, yeah, I didn't pass my driving test for the third time. So, <laughs> I hopefully I'm a better driver of the boat than a driver of the car. <laughs> I think for the last four years, it's a okay, case, so I'll let you take the boat next year. Next year would come, I'll let you take the boat next year. Because to me, the boat is like, it's, it's like my legs. The first task for David is navigating out of the harbour. A difficult manoeuvre, especially at night. OK, square up the boat and right, just watch your lights. Do not cut corners. So it's definitely like a car then. It's very, very easy to be too, too hard or too easy in the throttle. And if you do that here, it has to stall the engine, the engine will stop. He likes to repeat that a few times so it does put the fear of life into you. Because <laughs> you don't want to stall the engine in front of your boss, do you? No, you do not. He's uh, transitioning into becoming a good skipper, but I'm not going to give him any slack. Uh, it'll be constantly on his tail uh, to get him to improve, and I think that's all part of the learning curve for him. In the northeast, the Sardonyx is heading out to sea, skippered by Michael Watt. Everybody sees a sunset, but not much folks sees a sunrise in the summer thing. Michael is hunting for squid, a high-priced catch if he lands them fresh. So he's sailing just an hour from harbour to the Murray Firth. A good day would be 40 bucks just for us. <laughs> An average day, 20, 25. We'd be happy enough with that. Just a easier life. It's not so hard on the body. And too old for us, game. Helping Michael is his brother, Brian. Should be hot this time. The pair have been at sea together for 29 years after Brian left his first trade. Brian's a time served butcher. I was a butcher for a start. He's allergic to fish. Believe it or not. fish, no. After watching that day, uh, rub my eyes uh, when they uh, when, uh, working with fish, and certainly can't eat them anyway, can If he eat a haddock, it would kill him. We've tried it a few times, oh, just a little wee piece. If I tried them with squid, we'll maybe try it tonight. <laughs> Fast swimming squid are hard to catch. Hey, so when the net comes up, Michael's on the lookout for their bulging black eyes. On the eyes? It's a bit of bulb light, so. Oh, I see some eyes though, man. We like to see eyes. But a closer look, and it's mostly mackerel. 
They can still be sold at market, but it's not the prize Michael's after. It's not a dog. Hopefully get two boxes of squared out of it. Two or three, no, no more than that. There comes a time when every boat needs repairs. And when they do, they head to Fraserborough Harbour. Today, Mark Robertson is checking in two trawlers for some much needed refurbishment. The Zenith and his new boat, the Zephyr, which he bought just seven months ago. I think efficiency is a really good way at the moment. There's no the peaks, the troughs in it now. It seems to be more level. I've got a second boat because I've got to reinvest and, and go for it. It's expanding your business. Hey, if it doesn't work, you will stay sail one. <laughs> but there's work to do on the Zephyr before it's up to Mark's high standards. Well, the main engine's getting overhauled. The names is getting changed in the boat. And there's work getting done to the fish handling system. The propeller's never been off in 14 years, so it's going up to get just to check it and see if the pitch is OK. You wouldn't get 14 years with a set of tyres on your car. The boats must be carefully manoeuvred into the dry dock, where they'll be taken out of the water, ready for the seven-day makeover. Back in the North Sea, rookie skipper David has his first chance to prove to John he's up to the job. The target of the trip was to land at least 400 boxes with a good amount of monks, good amount of cod, and some of our mixed fish, just so that if the prices were poorer on one type of fish, you've got other fish to fall back on. The net's coming up now, so I've put it on pretty square. Oh, bit of fish here, Dave. I'm seeing some nice big monks, some cod. There's a lot of gaudies, but I'll take it. A gaudy is just a little ugly fish that is so annoying because they've got really big spikes along their back. They get stuck in the cod end meshes a lot and it makes the cod end heavier for the guys to lift over the side again. And they are worth nothing. They get put away for bait for crab boats. With David as skipper, this week, John has to take on the role of deckhand. He will be cooking, cleaning, and gutting fish all trip long. You never ever forget working at your first job, like whether it be gutting fish, tailing prawns, mending nets, a nice monkfish. I actually love being back out here again, like, I love it. Being the skipper can be lonely, as David is finding out. It's a weird, weird change, me being up here in the crew, being working. You kind of want to get your gear on and out of habit go. But uh, the jump had to come at some point, obviously. Back in the repair yard, co-owner Adam Robertson can get a good look at the Zephyr. He spotted a problem with the propeller. So the gaps here should be like a tight fit. Should maybe get your nail underneath, but not your whole fingers underneath the blade. So it's just need a little bit of filling up and maybe a little bit of a pitch on it, just to twist the blade so it puts a grip of the water a bit. A specialist job, the propeller must be sent away. There are only seven days in the dry dock, so the race is on to get the boats fixed and ready to fish again. Overseeing the work is experienced engineer Colin McKessick. We've got 14 guys working here today, but one is just to get everyone going down underneath the boats here. 
get the propeller off, let the painters get the boats washed, and then get these guys to get on the new numbers and names on the side of the boat. Try and get everything done as quick as possible. The sardonyx might be trawling close to shore, but it doesn't make it any less dangerous. Fishing in shallow, rocky waters, the net could get snagged at any time. Need a lot of patience at this game. Squid. And it's not long before Michael hits a problem. Duck chain on the back of the door. Every day, every hour, there's always something going wrong. Hopefully it doesn't happen too often, but there's always something like him. The weights are stuck on the side of the boat. At 600 kilos each, it's impossible for the crew to lift them by hand. So Michael comes up with an idea to use the crane. Are you in? We're going to the back strap and take a weight off a head and a eye on the chain. Just lift that, that strap over a pole. And I'll take her up to Wargy. Aye. Right, that'll work now. With the strain off, the weights can be stowed and the crew can bring the catch in. Evo! Hopeless. No, no, really bad help. Waste of time. We haven't done any damage and everybody's safe, so it's OK. It's a long day yet. On board the Reliance, John and David are still adjusting to the roll reversal. Alex, come on. I am a way to make this up. Tonight, it's going to be sweet and sour chicken and chips. It's going to be made brilliant. Well, the crew love my egg fried rice, so try and win me over with the egg fried rice. And That's what they're saying is, is I've got the X factor. Um, OK. You, they said as well that you have the L factor. I learner, learner. I need you learner. Is that learner or loser? <laughs> should close the hatch behind you, Ken. What anything else you'd like me to do? Um, I would ask for a cup of tea, but I'm nearly a tea person. It's not every day you get to bosh, well, not bosh your dad about because it's still his boat. I'm not going to be cocky about it. I think he's totally ruled out the fact I'm his son, which is good. He's looked at me as a deckhand that's wanting to become a skipper when we're at sea. And sometimes, most of the time, OK, I sometimes I should look at him more of my boss than my dad and not maybe speak back as much as I do, but... David likes cooking as well, but I'm a better cook than him. I kind of thought... Best way to learn up David was a hard way. And I hope, I hope it'll be and well. We'll know by the end of this landed anyway. <laughs> it's not just father teaching son on this trip. Skipper, I'm going to hate a call you doing here to work this microwave. I don't care who it works. <laughs> Dave, I don't care who the microwave works. It's OK, I'm into Western News now, but I'm going to... OK. I'm going to tell Mama she does not use a microwave. I can't have to use a microwave. I just don't know how to use that microwave <laughs> because it's new. How long you better on for? 30 minutes. Right, come here. You push micro. Micro. Uh -huh. And then turn it to the time you want. That is fantastic, that day. I just didn't get to so turn it to 30. 30. Aye, and okay. push. Can you push after that? It's not stop, is it? No, stop. it's stop. If I was hard, a very big competitive streak. Start. OK. With him, it's a case of, told you so. And with me, see, tell you it would happen. And that's just the bond that we, we actually have. It's just who we are. It's nothing serious, Ken. Uh, it's a kind of more a, like a, a brother relationship. Fishermen use knives for anything. <laughs> <laughs> On deck, David has another chance to impress his dad. A big haul of monkfish here will boost the value of the catch. Obviously, to start with, you kind of worry, will I manage to do it? I'm not raving with confidence. 
But as I get more experience here and he's out there and I'm doing everything myself in here, more confidence is coming. But there isn't much for David to celebrate in this hall. I would say you'd be lucky if you got two boxes among two of that looking at it. The Murray Firth is a busy fishing ground, but most of these boats are looking for mackerel or lobster. They pose no threat to the squid hunting sardonics. Ever since I could walk, I've fished, really. Well, Dad was a fisherman, and that's all we knew. Didn't know anything else. I did wonder about the Navy for about one summer. I'm glad I didn't there. I would have ended up in the Argentinian war or something. On the horizon, Michael spots another squid trawler working its way into his patch. It's what I would call a sport fishery to start the year. You're looking for a spot of fish, just a small clump of fish. If you hit the spot, the spot's yours. You're away with the what. The first to the catch will take home the prize, so the race is on. Trying to go faster than me, you see. I want to land. Look, see, it's even smoking. A wooden boat. A wooden hull vessel made of stick. Full revs, and Michael is pulling ahead. By George, I think we're going to do it. That's sufficient. But just as things are looking up, bad luck strikes again. Fast, Brian! We've came stuck. Michael must give up on the squid and get his boat free from the seabed. Well, to watch the net doesn't come with the tide into the stern of the boat. Just pull everything back to the fast. And if it doesn't come out, pull one side, pull the other side until something gives. Whoa! Stand by! Hope the net's not torn now. Stank the hole anyway, so we'll just take everything aboard and check. When the net was stuck on the bottom, most of the catch escaped. Quality is okay, but just not enough. Disaster again. Nothing. On shore, the repair work is nearly complete. Both boats are painted and the propeller can be put back on. There's only one problem. It doesn't fit. Very good, <laughs> very tight. She's jarring in the shaft. On this, so it's not to be taken to the top, Ellie. It needs some serious manpower to get it back on. Hi, I'll do you. I will, I will do you. Wrong time. Touch wood. <laughs> For a two boat ship, I'm looking at. Five, six thousand quid for a week. That's just the dock and charges. So when you factor in what you're spending, it's it's quite a lot of money. What do you get fishing new and get get touch some of them? Catch up with some of those bells. Work complete, the boats can finally get back in the water. 
I'll be on that one. Making sure that everyone's got a fender already so don't scratch the new paint. In a delicate operation, the Zephyr will be towed out by a pilot boat. Waiting on a taxi. Take a tour in! Take a tour in! A slight miscalculation and the Zephyr has been sent off course. Oh, it's get hit one way or another. And they've hit another vessel. What's working a pilot boy? Are they drunk? He's painting this thing. Could have gone better. There was a lot of bumps across the road, but we managed to get it through it. Got here eventually. The Sardonyx has been fishing in a favourite area of Michael's, a coastal stretch in front of Gardenston, the village he lives in. And that's my rock. It's my desert island. I built a house on it one day. But I can't have any talk with it. After a string of problems, Michael needs a big haul to boost the day's pay. But a herd of seals is trailing them, and one of their favourite things to eat is squid. Three seals now. They get free rain. Everyone loves a seal. They love going into the net and out again. Big loss to us. They always fix the big ones, like here. Want to hear me? Yeah, don't go down there. Disappointing, yes, sir. Hope it's squid, but they're disappointed. Doesn't even look like squid. Complete waste of time. Absolutely nothing there. Hopeless. Michael orders the nets back into the water for one last try. The crew of the Sardonyx have been fishing non-stop for 20 hours. One final haul, and they can return to harbour to land their catch. Give up! It looks all fish, no squid there. Time to go into land. Tonito, let's go home. Despite the small catch, the trip hasn't been a total bust. And there's enough squid to cover the day's expenses. That's the idea. All right. West of Shetland, rookie David is just halfway through his first trip as skipper. It's been smooth sailing so far, but he still has a long way to go to prove he can run the Reliance alone. Okay, wiggy wiggy boys, wiggy wiggy we'll win, Hal. Wiggy wiggy wiggy. Keep your fingers crossed and wait and see. Wiggy wiggy wiggy. Keep your fingers crossed and wait and see. You're kind of like worried and you're excited to see what's, what's there. Your heart's pumping at like 200 miles an hour. And you feel like everything is going so slow, but it's not. It's just you feel that everything is going so slow. As skipper, David's in charge of the boat, and the slightest error 
can end in disaster. But John has spotted a problem. Voice of motion! Okay, that's the starboard side up. Heave up the port a bit. I'm guessing he was just not happy with the way the boat was before. The wind was the right way, so. You've waited until the cold ends were right run about before you knocked it out of gear. You can't touch her now. No, but look at the flag. She's hard to do that way, anyway. You have to have your rudder at a correct angle, and you've got to lie before the wind. Uh, if you don't, you have a 99% chance of putting your bag into your propeller, which is a two-wind job. You can't thrush it out, you smash your engine in your gearbox. What you've got to remember is a mistake can cost you dear again. So, if he ever phones me and tells me he's coming out, oh, he's getting towed down because the propeller's in his shaft again, he better move to Iceland or somewhere if not get a hard one. Then I get excited. Just watch, fit your gear. I never okay. got excited. You did. As the nets go back out, John picks up on another mistake. Whoa! Just letting that out. Okay, slack. No, 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 no. See if I put the chains on, if I squint that, and you've got to keep the boat in the middle. Look it, because that's what oh, sort of happens when you do that. Okay. The last thing you want to do is shoot two. Uh, nets that are twisted up and they uh, haul after five or six hours with nothing. That's just stupidity. <laughs> Heave up! Okay, where she go? After a series of slip ups, the pressure is building on David. The reason why he's here is to tell me when I've made mistakes. But in a, in a nicer way, he could have done it a bit with a better tone of voice, maybe. You kind of feel like saying, uh, excuse me, I'm the boss this trip, but then it's his boat, so I think that would be... I think it would be disrespectful for me to say that to him, but... Uh, I don't know. Roll on for whenever I get to go myself. Next time, Mark and Adam road test the refurbed Zephyr. So this clutch needs to get pushed back in. I managed to fix something up. What's the office? And David has a brush with the fish police. OK, so we'll skip around. We'll, we'll get a tally off you. Right. We'll check what's in the hole. Maybe I've been set up. Take up the jail.